Okay, so in this video, we're going to take the terms hypertonic, isotonic, and hypotonic and apply them and see some examples of how osmosis works. So let's go ahead and start with a plant cell. So plant cells are surrounded in a rigid cell wall that's made by, of cellulose. Now on the inside of a plant cell, you have the cell membrane and the cytoplasm. Uh, so there, if you can see that black line is actually the cell membrane, which is on the inside of the cell wall. And then for the sake of this video, we're going to focus on the central vacuole. Uh, keep in mind that the plant cell still has a nucleus, Raffiar, Smoothiar, Golgi, Mitochondria, Chloroplast, etc. But right now we're focusing on water, so we're just going to show the large central vacuole. Okay, so there we go. Let's go ahead, though, and see what happens if we were to... Uh, look at water concentrations and solute concentrations on both sides of the cell. So when we talk about osmosis and the direction water is going to flow, uh, we talk about the concentration of water, but we also talk about the concentration of solutes. Now, if you remember, solutes are basically anything that's not water. Could be salts, could be sugars, um, could be ions, anything. So now let's go ahead and say that the inside of the plant cell is 97% water and 3% solutes, while on the outside is 90% water and 10% solutes. So here you wanna to think to yourself, okay, where is the higher concentration of, oops, where is the higher concentration of water, right? Uh, so when we look at the type of solution that the cell is sitting in or is surrounding the cell, um, inside the cell is 97% water and 3% solutes, where on the outside it's 90% water, 10% solutes. So there's a higher concentration of solutes and less water on the outside. So that solution surrounding the cell is a hypertonic solution. So now when we are determining which direction the water will flow, is your, are you gonna have a net movement of water out of the cell or will there be a net movement of water into the cell? So we see 97 is higher than 90. So water is actually a higher concentration inside and a lower concentration outside. So water is gonna leave this cell. Now, here's where plant cells are kind of cool, because as the water leaves the plant cell, what you're going to see is that you have the cell wall made of cellulose is still there, but the cell membrane actually will pull away from the cell wall as the cell loses mass. As the water flows out of the cell by osmosis, um, the cell will lose mass, and you can see that even that central vacuole is um, smaller. So when you look at what's this called, uh, this cell shrinking, this plant cell shrinking, is actually called plasmolysis. Okay, well, let's go ahead and see what happens if you take a plant cell. And same inside, maybe 97% water, 3% solutes. Uh, here, if it is in um, a solution that has the same percentage or concentration of water and solutes as the inside, we call this type of solution isotonic. So therefore, the water is still moving out and in of the cell or into the cell, but it's moving at equal rates. So there's still like movement, but it's not changing the size of the cell. Now though, let's go ahead and see if it's placed in 100% water. So now, again, you want to identify where is there a higher concentration of water and a lower concentration uh, of water, right? So here, uh, this cell is placed in a hypotonic solution with more water on the outside. And so therefore, the water is going to flow in, which causes the cell to gain mass and to swell. Okay, so let's go ahead and see. Um, Maybe in your lives, you've been told, like if you've ever had a sore throat, uh, you, your throat gets a little scratchy, it starts to hurt a little bit. So maybe your mom, your grandma, your aunt, someone says, or your dad, you know, hey, why don't you gargle with warm salt water? So the sore throat is actually caused by bacteria multiplying in these cells and tissues in your throat. So if you were to just gargle with salt water, uh, let's see what happens. So if inside the bacterium is 97% water, 3% solutes, and then you add some salt water to its environment, that's you gargling with salt water. So now the environment, the solution around that bacterium is now 85% water and 15% solutes.
In this example, the salt is a solute. So now we want to think about, okay, where is there a higher concentration of water? The water, 97, is higher than 85. So the water is going to, oh, sorry, where is there a higher concentration of water? Yeah, inside the cell, 97 is higher than 85. Now, our next question, how would you describe the solution? So in that um, solution is the liquid around the cell. Is it a hypertonic solution or is it a hypotonic solution? All right, so yeah, it's going to be a hypertonic solution. That is a solution that's high in solutes, low in water. And now, uh, will water be flowing into the cell or out of the cell? Remember, water flows from a high concentration to a low concentration, so it's going to be flowing out of the cell by osmosis. You'll have a net movement out. So when we see what happens to the cell, the water flows out and the cell will actually shrivel. So let's go ahead. So that's one of the reasons why it's uh, helpful to gargle with salt water when you feel a sore throat going on, but also a reason why it's important to just gargle and not swallow the salt water. If you swallow the salt water, the same thing will happen to your cells on the inside of your body. You will now be creating a hypertonic environment inside of you. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, check out this and practice a little bit more. So in this little setup I have here, the little triangles represent solutes and I have the uh, concentrations listed. So sometimes in different like word problems in biology classes, you may be tested by um, a diagram such as this where it gives you the solute concentration and it doesn't say anything about water. So the important thing to remember is a solute is very simply anything that is not water. So therefore, everything that's not a solute is water. So on the inside of these cells, if these cells are 5% solutes, the other 95% is water. So on the inside here, we would have a concentration of 95% water on the inside. So now in box A, if it's 5% solutes on the outside, well then that's gonna be 95% water at, outside of the cell. Now in, in B, if it's 0% solutes, that means it's gonna be 100% water. And in C, if it's 20% solutes, that means it's gonna be 80% water. So you're gonna add the solute concentration plus the water concentration and it'll equal 100. So let's go ahead and just check ourselves. Oops, which cell is going to gain water and swell? Well, the arrow already showed up, so that is cell uh, B. It's 100% water on the outside. So um, that is a hypotonic solution, and the cell is going to gain mass. Good. Now let's go ahead and see which cell is going to lose water and shrivel. So look at the concentrations of water. Good, it's C. If we look at cell C, it's 95% water on the inside and 80% water on the outside. So here, cell C is in a hypertonic solution and the water is going to come out and the cell is going to shrivel. It's going to lose mass. And our la last question, which one's going to stay the same? Which one is in isotonic conditions where the concentration of water is equal both on the inside and the outside, and therefore they're moving in and out of the cell at equal rates. Well, that one's A, because you have 95% water on the inside and 95% water on the outside. Okay, so here is my last slide. So let's go ahead and look at this and just make some predictions. So here I have a beaker of water. Let's pretend it's 100% water on the outside and 0% solutes on the inside. And we take a red blood cell, that's 2% solutes. So I want you to think to yourself, okay, if it's 2% solutes, how much water is that? Now I want you to think, okay, when this red blood cell enters into the beaker, is it going to gain mass? Is it going to stay the same? Or is it going to shrivel? All right, let's see. So here we enter the red blood cell into the beaker of water, and it gains mass. Because there's 100% water on the outside, in a hypotonic solution compared to the 98% on the inside. So water is going to have a net movement of in, which causes a cell to expand. All right, let's check ourselves in this beaker. So here we have another beaker of water. We're going to go with 90% water, 10% solutes. So let's take that red blood cell. That's 2% solutes. Okay, okay. So think to yourself, what percent of that red blood cell is water, right? So now you're like, okay, inside the blood cell is 98% water, and I see 90% water on the outside. 
So the water on the outside, the solution, sorry, the solution on the outside is 90% water, 10% solutes. So that is actually a hypertonic solution. And I want you to make a prediction of what's going to happen to that red blood cell when it enters. Okay, let's see. So as the red blood cell enters into the cell, I mean into the solution, it's going to lose mass. The water's going to go from 98% on the inside to 90% on the outside, and it's going to lose mass and it's going to shrivel. All right, that's it for my little practice with osmosis. So great job.